19 Nocturne Boulevard. Nocturne Boulevard? Not far. When you hit Howard, hang a right. Howard meets Philip at a weird kind of angle, and then you cross James and Poe. You can't miss Nocturne, it's just past the Ottoman. 19 Nocturne Boulevard. Your address for suspenseful stories of the speculative, strange, and supernatural. Tonight's story is... The Thrice Told Bell. Yes, this is 19 Nocturne Boulevard. Won't you step inside? Did you have any trouble finding it? What do you mean, what kind of a place is it? Why, it's an insane asylum at the turn of a previous century. Can't you tell? Right through here, sir, miss. Now, this is one of the saddest cases we have, sir, truth be told. Once he was the finest psychiatric mind in Europe, perhaps even the world. Always tragic when a good mind snaps. The same fire that feeds genius also devours and leaves madness in its wake. Yes, sir. What sort of madness does he suffer from? Miss? I don't know that I should... Go ahead, Wallace. Miss Loxley is not merely my fiancé, but a very competent and highly trained psychiatric nurse. We will be working in tandem to try and bring my late father's asylum into the 20th century. Hmm, from what I've seen, it will take quite some doing. Sir, I don't know about that, but your father was a very good and brilliant man. Though the last ten years or so, since your mother died, begging your pardon, sir, he seemed to lose interest in everything. Did he... not even treat the patients? He left much of that in the hands of Dr. Trevelyan. Why did he not send for me? I could have spent my residency here instead of in Budapest. I could certainly have learned as much from my father as I did from Dr. Bulovic. Sir, if you don't mind me speaking above me place, I think your father, well, he didn't want you to see him like that. But I might have been able to help him. I don't think not could have helped him. Not at the end there. He should have sent for me. Dearest, he did what he thought was best. I'm sure your father thought very highly of you. Otherwise, why should he have left this institution under your care? Of course. You're right. Always the practical one. One of us needs to be, and you must save your energy for the needs of the patients. Well, show us this paragon, Wallace. Sir? The doctor you say was so sadly struck down. Oh yes, sir. It's sad tis to see great men crumble. <laughs> Herr Doctor, young Dr. Pettigrew wishes to speak with you. Enter. Oh, here we go then. Dr. Pettigrew, Miss Loxley, Dr. Van Helsing. Gorvi done mopping. Gorvi eat now. Tis not dinner time yet, you pillock. You're supposed to muck out the barn and make room for that motor car the new head brought with him. Motor car? What is motor car? An engine of Satan. If God had wanted us to spit about in great smoke and heaps of metal, he wouldn't have made horses. Gorvi hungry! Off with ye! I have no time for this today. Must have everything ready for inspection by the new head. And here's hoping he doesn't choose to suck us all. Shoo! <laughs> oh, oh. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Pretty, golden. Oh, ho! <laughs> ah! <gasps> wow! No, no scream. No scream. Corvi, Corvi, not bad. No scream, pretty, pretty. <laughs> Miss, someone was looking at me. 
a man. Of course. Don't you worry. We'll sort it all out. After Wallace's admonitions, this is hardly what I expected. I'm quite aware of my condition, my dear Dr. Pettigrew. You're fortunate enough to catch me on a good day. Perhaps you would indulge me with your own diagnosis. Simple, really. Bouts of severe depression, which I'm ashamed to admit, I treat unsuccessfully with overuse of alcohol. Dipsomania? I would consider it more a symptom than a core disease, but you understand how difficult it is to be objective. I appreciate your frankness. I trust you are comfortable here, Doctor. This is hardly a typical cell. More like a suite in an expensive hotel. Dr. Pettigrew, the elder, was very kind and understood that reading. Helps me to moderate my humors. If only more patients could respond to such simple, constructive therapies. <laughs> the human mind is a fabulous, complex organ. It is amazing. Ah, oh, pretty, pretty. Corvey likes pretty golden Brit. Oh, pretty not like Corvey. Corvey only look. Do you want her? Who... who is there? Please! Help me, and I shall help you in return. Who... Where, where are you? Corvi is alone! Return later, and bring a shovel. I shall show myself. You... you new doctor? Do you want this pretty breath you long for? Oh, want... Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Farge. Are you certain you want to do this, Michael? I realize your father... They expect it. Even look forward to it. Besides, they should be given the chance to meet the two of you. You needn't worry. It is only the most stable of the inmates. <coughs> Miss McClinton. Miss Loxley. Dr. Pettigrew. May I present Miss Britt Mecklin? Pleased to meet you, Doctor. Miss Loxley. Charmed. Lovely. Will you have a seat? It would be somewhat indelicate to discuss cases during dinner. There will be time tomorrow to familiarize ourselves. Of course. I have nothing to hide. I have come to realize that it is only in my subconscious that people watch me. Understanding it is all in my head does not stop it from frightening me, but makes it more bearable. We shall work on that. Corvi brings shovel. Have you right? Corvi have candle. Do you see the bell? Bell? The bell. You must move the bell. Um, no bell. Gordy, see no bell. It is metal. It is large. Move it or I shall unleash the fires of hell upon you. Ah! Don't you dare! Oh, Lucas! Lena, I simply couldn't take it anymore, having to out to that boy doctor and his miserable cold fiancé. Lucas, you should have been put in charge. I know. Blood runs thick. Dr. Pettigrew shouldn't have looked over your years of loyalty, your unstinting devotion. There's no time for that now. We must bide and see what they decide to alter. 
What the devil is wrong with you, you idiot? Running about in the lane like a madman. Home yourself, Lena. Tis easy for you to be charitable. You didn't have to squeeze work out of him like blood from a turnip. Turnip! That's what you are. Corvey not turnip. Corvey scared. What frightened you? Perhaps a slight breeze. Shh. Gorvey, tell me everything. Right on time. Have I ever missed? Were it a good idea, do you think, to tell them you was an alcoholic? I need a reason for my presence here that wouldn't require overmuch explanation. Speaking of spirits, have you? <laughs> of course. Would I let you down? Your thoughts on the new administrators? Well, you'll never have an happy life. Not with that one. She's cold, no mistake. True words were never said. He seems well-intentioned, but I don't see how you'll be able to tell him much. Not without proof. And there you are. Better use for me wooden leg, I'll never know. Except the one. Care to save at a game of chess before you strap it back on? Don't mind if I do. There, door. Garvey no go in again. In the old chapel. Dr. Pettigrew always insisted it was on the verge of falling in. Not safe. No go in. He say Garvey move bell. He yell at Garvey. Or half wet. Run along back to the kitchen, Gorby. No need to wait out here in the wet. Doctor, be careful. Of course. Go on. Hmm. Sounder than I expected. Here's the shovel. And that must be the bell. That explains a lot. Who's ever seen a huge bell sitting on the floor? Hardly even recognizable under all those cobwebs. Must have fallen. Help me. Hello? Help. Please. The bell. It came down and it trapped me. I see. Hmm. Wait. The cracks in the flags below it are covered in dust. That bell fell ages ago. Please. Help. Could that voice be coming from? Move the bell. Anything you want, it will be yours. I doubt you could give me what I truly want. Oh, yes. I can give you such things. Come, close to the crack in the bell and tell me what it is you crave. <laughs> Darling? Yes, Michael? Do you think you can stick it here? Of course. You know I'm fully prepared to take on anything you need me to do. I know, but... Well, you won't hate it, or, or anything, living in the country like this. I shall immerse myself in work, just as you will, side by side. Should I... may I sit next to you there on the settee, then? Michael, we are to be wed in the spring. I just want to make certain... Living here without a proper chaperone and all. Of course, darling. I... I think I, I shall turn in. Get an early start in the morning. That sounds very wise. Yes? Did you need anything further tonight? No, we were. <gasps> what? Mrs. Barge, whatever is the matter? That be the bell of the old Kirk. Come now, it's never done that before. Nay. I've been here nigh on 15 years, and that bell has never rung. But I wouldn't go seeking it, not even if my very life depended on it. Mm. Check. What's that? What? The bell. Don't you hear it? Nonsense. Hmm. Go and check it. If it is, we might have a problem on our hands. I'll get going. Wait, just in case. Is it? It should help. Every bit does. Leave the door open, shall I? <gasps> Ice! Someone at 
the window? I will not go look. I will not. Open the window that I may bask in your rays. <gasps> it is not real. I must take my solace in the Lord. God, please give me strength. Are you certain you'll be all right? I could bring in a cot. There's a couch in my dressing room. No, Michael. I will be fine. Kiss me quickly and go to bed. Sleep well. <sighs> Men. Branch? We'll see about that. Good God! Miranda! Darling! I'll be right there! Miranda! Open the door! I'm coming in! Michael? Whatever are you doing? Uh, are you... All right? Of course, darling. I woke from a strange dream. Nothing to fret over. If you're quite certain... When am I not? Well, sorry, I... Go back to bed, dear. We'll talk tomorrow. Good, my most delectable one. <laughs> Doctor, sir, it's morning, it is. Come on in, Wallace. I'm up. Is... Miranda, Miss Loxley up. Feeling poorly, she says. Wouldn't even have the drapes open. Trevor don't suit her. I suppose I might have breakfast with Dr. Trevelyan, then. I ain't sure where he can be found, sir. We're out last night and ain't come back. Does he do that often? Can't say, sir. <sighs> I hate to breakfast alone. <clears throat> sir, Dr. Van Helsing would be glad of your company. Gorvi! Gorvi! Where is that bloody idiot? <laughs> what the devil is wrong with ye, you mongrel? Get out here! Oh, Gorvi no like! Gorvi like breakfast? He, yes, please. Gorvi will get up and work then! Aye, Mrs. Farge. Go fetch some water from the well, you brute. And while you're out, you might look where you last left Lucas. Dr. Trevelyan, that is. And see what he's been up to all night. No! No go to old door! No! I'll get the whip! <sighs> Come in, dear fellow. Wallace? Yes, sir. The chapel? Never made it, sir. The inmate was restless last night. Today, then? Better anyway. Better night. I hope so. Sorry, do you mind if I sit down with you? Never meant to exclude you, dear boy. Simply thought I'd heard something last night that couldn't have been. The bell? You heard it as well. Of course. Why? Would you do me an enormous favor? If I can. I have a busy day ahead of me, and Miranda's a bit... Uh, under the weather. As soon as we finish here, then, go along with Wallace to the old chapel. Take a look at the bell, would you? Why? Hmm. That's a tale for after you've looked. Do you by any chance play chess?
go away. Dina want to start organizing everything. Oh, blast. Can you help me? I feel weak as a kitten. You do look a wee bit pale. I'll fetch something hearty to drink. <sighs> I couldn't face anything heavy. Humor and delusion is not the right answer. In most cases. You heard the bell too, sir. But why go look at a bloody bell? Come along, then. Oh, my gracious lord. What is it? Oh, that must have been... Help me move it. I fear it's too late for Dr. Trevelyan. Help me! <laughs> Good God! Sir! You're right. He's gone. That thing must have fallen and crushed him. Shouldn't there be more blood, sir? Not necessarily. We'll get him back to the infirmary and take a look. I'll go for a stretcher then, shall I? Just a moment. Is this the bell we heard? Yes, sir. There's not even a clapper. Hasn't been wrong in decades, sir. What are all these markings on the inside? Would well, no, sir, though I don't doubt Dr. Van Helsing could help you. Really? Why would he? I think he was here when the bell fell, sir. It must have been sitting here. The clear circle on the ground. But this is odd. I demand an explanation. Who precisely was trapped under that bell? What? I saw the marks of fingernails. Trying to scratch a way out. Wallace said you were there, along with my father. I want to know what you did. Sit. Wallace? Yes, sir. Please check on the residents, particularly any comely females. Now, my boy. You're not mad at all, are you? You've lived here all this time. Shh, shh. You need to hear this. Fifteen years ago, your father called upon my services to help him with a rather difficult problem. A rash of unusual deaths and nightmares among the female inmates. Having had a great deal of experience with such obsessions and delusions, I was able to spot the problem immediately. A vampire. A vampire? One who believes he must steal life from the living? No delusion. A true creature of the night. <laughs> Preposterous. Humor an old man. This was not just any vampire, but Dracula, the lord of all vampires, whom I've sworn to destroy. But the bell? We trapped him. Blessings etched on the inside, some from when it called the faithful, others, we added, kept him penned. Simply putting a stake through his heart, as would do for most vampires, is not sufficient for Dracula. Far too simple for those who follow the dark arts to summon him back across the dark divide. But there must be a way. What do you think I've been researching all these years? I believe I have the answer, but first we must locate him. Why should I believe any of this? Ask your fiancé. Let me fetch the doctor. Yes, you can't be too careful. Nonsense. I'm just tired. I'm not used to the country. Someone was looking into my room last night. Nonsense! You know that's all in your mind. No, it was real. Eyes at the window. Red eyes? You saw them too? Don't be silly. How could it... <gasps> oh, goodness. I I'm sorry, but darling, there's something I, I must ask. Remove that scarf and show us your neck, if you please. <gasps> Resting normally, despite the slight anemia, she should recover. We must watch her very closely, though, my young friend. How could this have happened? Miranda is the most sensible of women. Does it take a fanciful mind to be attacked by a rabid dog? No. In fact, a more fanciful mind is often better prepared to ward off such evil. Witness Miss Mecklin. Me? What did he say to you at your window? It was just noises, scratching. Come now. There were words, if not in your ears, then in your mind. Were there not? <laughs> It's my subconscious, not real. 
This time, I'm afraid, it is much different. You must help us. He just said, open the window. But it was definitely a he. It is always men who are watching me. Did he say where he might hide by day? No, I am so sorry. Never mind, you did well. Keep your Bible close tonight. Oh, yes. No more for Garvey. He will sleep now. No more work. Garvey will... Silence. <laughs> Shut the door. You did not release me. But I can overlook that if you will serve me now. <laughs> Good. I still know what you want. The oh-so-lovely... Miss Britt. Mm -hmm. Then this is what you must do. I appreciate your humoring me, Michael. Of course. Bringing everyone here to my room. I assume you think we may be safe here. As safe as anywhere else. How can we all sleep? You may lie on the couch, if you need to. Michael and I will remain awake, on guard. I can help guard as well. Did you bring your Bible? I could not find it. Never mind. I think we have whatever we may need. Wallace? Absolutely, sir. What if he doesn't come here? He must. I circled the patient rooms and staff quarters with poppy seeds and salt. He will never get across that. So he will have to come here or... Or starve. We can slow him with spells or stake him through his heart, but to truly banish his soul to the purgatory he so richly deserves, only holy water will suffice, and not a mere sprinkling, a veritable dousing. Vampires are irredeemably evil. The only way to save Miss Loxley from this hellish fate is to destroy this monster before she loses the last spark of humanity. As long as her soul does not depart her body, she can be saved. This will be it. Are you ready? Can't wait to see how it turns out, sir. Good man. Ah, it begins. Corvey is alone. Let Corvey in. Bloody idiot! You may be more correct than you know. Wait for my signal. Michael, I... wake up. Get the ladies into the dressing room back there. Whatever you do, do not open the door until you're certain it is morning. You may have to restrain Miss Loxley, if Dracula has enough of a hold over her. Can you? Yes, I think so. Move then. There's a good lad. Take this. But I'm not Catholic. It offers some protection. Now. Right. Gorvey? Is there anyone with you? No. Who would be with Gorvey? <laughs> no one alive. Throw open the gate. Oh, right. Just a moment. Oh, my. Stay back. Oh, Wallace. Oh. Dracula. You stand between me and destiny, old man. Step aside and I shall kill you quickly. Never, back foul fiend. S you believe you can tame me? I have seared my flesh on your so clever prison walls so many times. I have scars. And yet you do not approach. Only a fool uses his hands to dig when he has a shovel. Golvey! Master! <laughs> and now, my most precious enemy, prepare to meet your well-deserved fate! No! Damn it, boy, you've ruined it! Do what you want with me, but... Of course, Herr Doctor. You have always cared more for others than for yourself. Come to me, my darling. I must go. No! Get back! Miss Miranda, you can't! Let me pass, trumpet. Brit! Brit! A gift for me? You are too kind. My love! You don't want her! Oh, she is merely the aperitif, my dearest darling. 
You alone can satisfy me. <gasps> now, my pale blonde flower. <laughs> no! Corvey won't spread! <laughs> Wallace, ready! <laughs> Imbecile! <laughs> Wallace! Yeah! Kick him! <laughs> <laughs> and now, what do you do? I have your leg. Yes, that you do. What? No! <gasps> no! Good God! Holy water. But how? I would have seen a bottle. Wooden leg. Ah! And a small blasting cap. Uh, sir, can I get a hand? Certainly. I'll even give you a leg up. Now that you know how to find us, don't be a stranger. We have enough of those already. Tonight's story... The Thrice Told Bell was written by Julie Hoverson as an homage to Hammer Films as suggested by Bill Holwig of Broken Sea Audio. In tonight's production, Dracula was Brian Hendrickson, Van Helsing was Rick Lewis, Wallace was Jean Torkildsen, Dr. Michael Pettigrew was Michael Fagenblum, Miranda Loxley was Femnomena, Mrs. Farge was Molly Tollefson, Gorvey was Joel Harvey. Dr. Lucas Trevelyan was Matthias Redney Morgan. Britt Mecklen was Julie Hoverson. And additional voices were provided by Crystal Baker, Cole Hornaday, and Renaud LaBeouf. Renaud LaBeouf also provided assistance with directing. Music for this episode was composed by Harlan Glotzer and performed by the Toybox Trio. Toyboxtrio at gmail.com. The 19 Nocturne Boulevard theme song was courtesy of Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. The lyrics to The Rain It Raineth Every Day are by Shakespeare and appeared in his play Twelfth Night. Sound effects were found on Soundsnap.com. Sound and mastering was done by Julie Hoverson. This was recorded at Neo Hoodoo Studios with the assistance of Ryan Hurst. This presentation is copyright 2008 to Julie Hoverson and Reality Productions. Should have looked a little bit. It is a low flying bat, as what it is. Now we try it with the Russian accent. Who's there, Reese? <laughs> okay, here we go. Bid a bot and great hip and hips of. <laughs> How could you ever think that you'd do something like that? After all, appearances. Show me your ankles. Yes! Yes! Show me your ankles. <laughs> 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 this is not an important film. Oh, want? Yes. <laughs> that just made every woman in the room cry. <laughs> <laughs> and now, my most precious man. That's too laughing. I can't believe it's not the blood. I admit it, I've got to stick up my butt. That's what we want. Yeah. Didn't you admit it? No, I didn't have it up there. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Gorvi, tell me everything. It all started with turnips. <laughs> she loses the last spark of her mian. I'll get the whip! Mmm!